Be safe. Remember the glasses if you're watching the eclipse. We'll see you tomorrow bright and early, 4 a.m. But every once in a while, for reasons unknown to our ancestors, the sun disappeared. Why? If there's a war going on or if there's a drought going on. Or maybe. They also say that it's God in the heavens, right? This is a natural event that is being caused by God. And medieval Europeans think that it is a sign of political change. Of course, we now know there's a scientific reason behind a rare solar eclipse. When the moon covers up the sun, uh, the sky turns a sort of royal blue-black color. 360 degrees around, sunlight from outside of the shadow zone is filtering in, so it appears like a sunrise and a sunset on the horizon. And today, that is what our country will witness. We see this phenomenal event in the sky. We're having that same sense of awe, that think about all the people who came before us that saw this, and then all the people in the future. And that's why I think we want to come together in large numbers to watch it communally, because we're part of mankind always watching these events. We always look up for them. Solar Eclipse 2024. And hello once again. Good afternoon at 1101 on this very historic day. We have a very rare total solar eclipse. And all over here, where we're looking in Rochester, from the country that starts, you know, down in Mexico, up through Texas, we're all going to watch this journey. Thumbs up. We see you, Jared, and everybody. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? Um, some of the areas. Where is this one? In Mexico. So we're starting south. Look at people already getting out there, and they have full sun right there. Absolutely gorgeous place to watch. But we're going to be across this whole journey as it goes up through Texas, through all of the other states, and that thin band all the way up to Vermont. Um, and there's going to be a lot of study happening. Fascinating today also from Wallops, you know, the base down there, the island. Um, they'll be shooting off rockets so they can study what happens on the dark side of the moon during an eclipse. So, so many cool things. We've got coverage here really all day long. Mike Jarek's up there in Rochester. He'll be there. Our teams of meteorologists, our teams of reporters here in our area at the schools and all around Franklin Institute and also um, all around this country, like in Indianapolis. So that's all coming up right now on the show. I'm Karen Hepp. Thank you for joining us for more Good Day and special coverage of what's happening with the eclipse. Let's take a look at that map that I was speaking of. That's exactly your zone. So if you're lucky to not to be in that, that's your path of totality. But we're going to get a pretty good glimpse in our neck of the woods. You see a little edge of that does nick Pennsylvania most certainly. That's out in Erie, and we have live pictures of Erie. We'll show you that. We've been showing you pictures all day of Indianapolis, of Cleveland, all in that path. One, the one in um, Oklahoma has a fabulous name, and it looks so beautiful. We'll show you that. But we're still going to get 80% in our neck of the woods. Here's our timing, because you're all like, well, when is this going to be happening? It's when you're picking the kids up from school. If you're going to get them around 3 o'clock, 320 is when we're going to be seeing it in full effect. So it'll be in the 80% in Pennsylvania and, in, and in also in New Jersey, Delaware, but um, in that upstate New York area when we get across that path there where Mike is, and he'll be showing us all these pictures all the way through that as well. So Mike is in Rochester. <laughs> what a great assignment, yes. Mike. Uh, it was when the skies were clear up till about an hour ago. Now look at it. It's just totally gray. But it's still going to be interesting to be in the dark it might even be darker with the clouds. So I'm into all the band starting. Before we go any uh, farther or further here, Karen, yes. do you know this man's name? Karen Hepp. Hello, Krupp. Do you know his John name? John Krupp. Yeah. Channel 8. I said it. Tell him I said Back John. Back in the day. Todd Krupa. Oh, Todd Krupa. I think oh, it's there Todd. we go. So close. Yes. It had a similar Todd. sound. Todd yes. Krupa. Todd. Yeah, Todd. First thing he said <laughs> How's to me. Going, Eric? Karen. She says hello. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> worked together it it at Channel 8. <laughs> we worked together for years and yeah. years. And uh, I had the right sounds. You have to make him forgive me. So, um, yes, that was. I worked at the CBS station in Rochester, New York, for and had a great, great time for years and years and years. So lots of fun. Well, he certainly remembers you. Hopefully you left finally. a lasting impression. Hey, uh, here we go. Come over here. Look at this thing. Sir? 
Give me your name objects. again. Alan Chrysolo. And what is this thing we're looking at? We are looking at a 360 degree panoramic camera designed for real time video. That means when it is fully up and running, we would be able to broadcast a full surround image as if you were sitting in the middle of that camera. So we could go anywhere in the world. So what's the eclipse going to look like? The eclipse is going to look pretty cool because we're going to see the whole ambiance of the um, crowd here. The individual um, uh, images of the sun will be small, but we'll be able to see what it feels like visually so to be here. This will fill up with people. Yes. And so you'll see all of them. Yes. But way up you'll see the sun. Yes. And if we're lucky enough yes. that for these clouds to dissipate a little in totality, we will see in a view as if you are standing right here projected anywhere in the oh, world. Man, that's awesome. How can we see it after it's all over? We will do a little bit of post-processing to make it really nice yeah. and put it up on our website. Which is? Uh, circleoptics.com. Okay. The, I'll look for it. Good. And the planetarium might also have it on their website. That's We're fantastic. talking to them about that. Good to meet you. Thank you. Now let's get some uh, sun. What do you say? Like please. It. Please. There's a little bit. Come on. The parting of the clouds. It'll happen. Don't worry. Fingers, toes crossed. All right. Uh, let's go, Mike, to one. Uh, Hank? Is he over at the on the parkway? We're going to go. Let's see. Thank you, Michael. Oh, okay. You want me? I'll stay. You can stay with me if you want. Well, I love you, but you I'm going to go to Sue Serio for a check of the forecast. Hi, okay. Sue. Okay. We're slow on the punch machine there. There we go. <laughs> All the way up the path of the storm. So there's Rochester, and oh no, those are the clouds. So hopefully some of those clouds will clear. As far as the uh, precipitation is concerned, look at how conveniently for just about every of these cities in the totality, the rain is in Tennessee and down here in uh, Louisiana and Mississippi, but not in Dallas, not in Little Rock, Paducah, Indianapolis, Cleveland. You can see skies are a little bit cloudy along the path, but they should be able to see it now. We're concerned a little bit about this area that's of rain that's heading up uh, toward Buffalo and maybe even Rochester, but you can see they are kind of socked in with clouds there, and this is where Mike is right now. Hopefully some of those clouds will thin out by the time we get to the moment of totality. Let's talk about our conditions for viewing. So far, so good. The clouds are very thin. Uh, maybe some uh, heavier clouds moving in later on, but north and west of the city is where you're more likely to see cloud cover than in the city and south and east. So for us, around 90% of the sun will be disappearing at the time of totality at our peak 323 we will see a sliver of sun to the left there's a picture and then uh, you can start really watching this happen at 208 with the proper glasses ending at 435 and the future cast is going to show us yeah there'll be clouds times of clouds but those clouds will see the sun peeking through we go through and just so you know tomorrow we're going to have a high temperature in the upper 70s Eclipse will be over Wednesday morning. You will probably need your umbrella since we're here talking about the weather. We might as well go beyond the eclipse time. And there's eight o'clock Thursday morning where we could see some more rain. Now back to today. It looks like dry weather all day long. Yes, we will see times of uh, when we will see uh, a few clouds here and there, but don't let it uh, panic you. It's probably not going to be socked in. You can see by noon we'll be at 62 degrees, 66 by 3 p.m. And that, of course, is pretty close to uh, the, as much as we're going to see of totality and 6 p.m. It'll be in the 60s as well. Right now it's 55 degrees in Philadelphia and we don't have a whole lot of wind. Uh, 68 should be our high today. 77 feeling like late May tomorrow. That's a one day special though because then we get some showers on Wednesday. Uh, Phillies come back to town on Thursday and it looks like they might encounter some rain, but it does look like it'll dry out as we get in over the weekend. So Karen, we've got our countdown clock 
Uh, could this be true? I, you know what? I think it froze there at seven hours. We're not seven hours away from from totality. I'll check. I'll check that and uh, we'll fix it. But we're getting close. We're getting close. In fact, there's our countdown clock. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for joining in on our Fox Local app, where we're streaming all of our Eclipse coverage, a live look right now at Rochester, New York. This, of course, is their planetarium and their science center. And there's people already gathering. As you can see, they have a stage set up. They have a giant screen. People are bringing their chairs, their friends and family. Of course, we know there's a lot of folks that have made that journey from our area, from Mount Laurel, New Jersey, and from so many other places. Mike's been talking with them all morning long, um, ever since 6 a.m., and we'll be up through the entire eclipse itself. Um, so the eclipse, of course, as you know, it's going to begin um, in this country. Austin, Texas is probably one of our biggest hamlets where people will be watching at around 236. Dallas at around 240. Indy, we have some really nice cameras there in Indianapolis. Um, beautiful, like, stretch of the sky that we can see at 306, Rochester 320, and then sort of finishes up in our country in Burlington, Vermont. Um, at 326, and then I would imagine we'll proceed into some areas of Canada as well. You'll have visibility. But we will be able to watch it here, and I'm sure you'll be doing it if you've got those special glasses. And there's a lot of places where you can get the glasses for free, or they'll have watch parties. Bob Kelly was out at a watch party earlier where they had cocktails, and it's fun for the family. You can bring your dogs. But let's get to one of our favorite places, the Franklin Institute, because that's where Hank is right now. Hi, Hank. Hey, Karen, good morning. Check it out. You can't ask for a place other than the Franklin Institute to give you a literally, and look at the moon moving around the Earth up here. For a direct example of what we're going, it was showing you a lunar eclipse. Now it's moving around to give us what we will be experiencing in just a few short hours, a solar eclipse. The moon blocks the sun's rays from us on the Earth, giving us well, at least here in Philadelphia, the large part of a blackout. Larry Dubinsky, the president and CEO of uh, Franklin Institute. Larry, 
This is fabulous. And and you all, I mean, there's so many different things to check in on. First of all, tell us what's happening out front today. We're going into this, and the Institute's really picking up uh, speed right as the eclipse gets started. And people want to get involved. How can they with you all? Absolutely. Out front today, we have a free event, a community event, a party on the parkway yeah. to witness the solar eclipse here. We'll see about 90% totality around um, 3.15 this afternoon, but we have tents outside with solar filters. People can look up and see the eclipse happening. We also have telescopes that are specially fitted as well. We have a beer garden. We've got a DJ. We got eclipse themed food and drink here. So a phenomenal day of fun here, family fun here at the Franklin Institute out front. Well, how cool is it that 90% coverage in the area where we live, not just for its own means, uh, but also to have it over the Franklin Institute. We've actually got people like you, certainly like people like Derek Pitts to talk about, and he'll be the man of the day to Day. If I can get a minute with him, I'll consider myself lucky. But that's game day for a guy like Derek. Absolutely. Derek will be here today. He'll be kind of walking people through what they're seeing, answer their questions out front here at the Institute. It's science education. It's engagement. It's what the Franklin Institute does better than anybody. Now, Karen, this is part of the uh, incredible space. This is you're in the wondrous space exhibit, wondrous exactly. Space, that's it. And if you go upstairs from here, there's actually a really cool rocket display. Karen, I heard you talking earlier about the three missiles that NASA is sending up into the ionosphere to try to get us more research, more knowledge on exactly uh, on, on, on what dynamics change up in the sky when we do have uh, a solar eclipse like that. I'm hoping to talk with Derek about that. Uh, but Larry, I, I, it's an existential question more than anything else. Doesn't a solar eclipse like this, when the sky, the sun gets blacked out in the middle of the day, doesn't it make us really reassess every single thing about our existence? Well, I think it's what the cultural phenomenon is. It's why we're going to have thousands of people here today, right? That chance to look up into the unknown, to yeah. look at the heavens, to look at the sun, look at the, at the moon and things happening. I mean, that's what it's all about. And I think people do look into it. You know, we've been doing it for years. We won't have another one of these for 20 years in North America. So I think bringing people together, learning together, I mean, I think that's what it's all about. No question, guys. Five tents with holes cut in the top of them. The best, the safest way to enjoy it with scientific uh, expertise to check in with. Even a cold beer to drink while you watch and it goes down. Come on down to the Institute, guys. We'll be here for a while as well. That sounds great, Hank. I know that they had some special beers where Mike was. They were drinking their, um, you know, wow. celestial beers and all of that. Let's check in. Thank you, Hank, with um, Bill Anderson, who's out on Rittenhouse Square. You know, it's also interesting, uh, Independence Mall. So, um, so Bill, it's, I was thinking about all those planes that were flying, people that booked those flights in order to watch the eclipse. I wonder if there's any live streams there. That would be so cool. Oh, you got your glasses. I do, and we're right up the street, Independence Visitor Center. And the thing about it, and I don't profess to be especially sciencey, but I put the glasses on because I was all about the fashion statement and getting in the mood, and I wanted everybody to see the glasses that you're going to need and be available so that you can do this and look at the sun. Here's the, I don't know if you're supposed to do that. Can you do that with the camera? Anyway, so here's the thing. If you don't have these glasses and you put them on for the first time, you can't see anything in these glasses. They're like blackout glasses and it makes perfect sense that that's the only way you can look into the sun. Catherine Otlevel, the president of Philadelphia Visitor Center, president and CEO. Thank you. Is here with us. Because you guys are having a watch party. This is a place where people can come and kind of check it all out. Yeah, yeah. So this is the East Terrace of the Visitor Center. We think it's one of the best views in town. Um, you know, we've got the Independence Hall behind us, the National Constitution Center in front of us, and this beautiful Independence Mall, our national park here in Philly. Um, yeah, we, we would love folks to come up here and hang out with us while we check out this once-in-a-generation uh, solar phenomenon. It's pretty impressive. And you were just telling me during the break that there's a lot of different things going on. Hank's up the street at the Franklin Institute. But because this area brings, what, thousands, tens of thousands, millions, millions, millions. of visitors, some of them may not have planned yet. And this could be a good place for them to come. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we think Philly residents, they're probably already making their plans, have made their plans about where they're going to see the eclipse today. But maybe if you're a tourist, or you're visiting the city, you know, you might not have thought about that. So we're so grateful to our 
partners at the Science History Institute because they have provided thousands of pairs of these glasses. And um, they uh, want to make sure that every visitor to the historic district gets a chance to see the eclipse. And you can see we have tons of tourists out here today, um, school groups visiting. And we just want to invite everybody up here to our, to our terrace to make sure that they don't miss this once in a lifetime event. So tell me everything that is going on today. What oh, we have, we have a lot, you know, this is really just a, uh, you know, a, just a, a viewing party. So we're just going to hang out here on the terrace. We do have some fun activities for folks. We have the American Philosophical Society, our great partners just down the street. They're going to come and, and actually um, bring a machine that allows people to experience the eclipse through sound. So if you're partially blind or um, visually impaired in some way, um, or maybe the clouds roll in at the last minute, yeah. um, this is going to be, um, you know, some sort of a machine that allows people to experience this in another way besides um, just visually. So that'll be really cool to see. We have our great friends at Art Star, um, which is a shop that we have here at the Independence Visitor Center that features local um, craftspeople, local makers, and they've created this really fun craft activity so you can decorate Philly-fi your glasses. Nice. Um, Give you a little taste, because we're going to do an example of that in just a little bit, but that's a little taste. Yeah. We're going to customize our own glasses. Yeah, yeah. So something for kids or grown-ups to do just to make their glasses a little more uh, individualized, a little more Philly-fied. Oh, cool. Yeah. I should have brought, like, my Pulse and Fox 29 <laughs> stickers and stuff that yeah. I could put on Fox Local. So can they come up here and watch? Yeah. Well, but this is, we were saying, this is just a beautiful area to watch from the terrace or otherwise. You think you're expecting people to be down there too? Can people yeah, come grab people, glasses and sure. then go outside? Absolutely, they can go where, wherever they want. And you know, the terrace is actually open to the public. So people can come out here any day, right? They can come out here, eat their lunch here, just enjoy the beautiful weather. Now that the weather's getting nicer, finally, you know, getting warmer, people can come up here anytime. But I don't think there's a better place to watch the eclipse than up here, you know, on this second floor where you just have a beautiful vista. And thank God, you know, no clouds in the sky today. So hopefully we're gonna have a really beautiful view of this. All right, so put your glasses on. Okay. We're going to give them a little taste. Yeah. So when you look it's up so at weird. it, and again, I don't know if the camera is supposed to do that. I think there's rules with the camera looking directly at the sun. So we're here. Yeah. This is what you see when you look through my glasses. You that's don't see it. anything besides the sun. All right, so that's what you see. The glasses kind of block it out. I'm yeah. protecting the camera because I'm a scientist. Yeah, yeah, But definitely. when you looked at the sun yeah, for the first yeah, time, yeah. I feel like the common thing that we've gotten from people is, I didn't realize the sun was that small. It's so small. It's a little crazy, it's right? It's so small. I can't believe how small the sun is. I can't believe you can't see anything else out of these glasses. <laughs> I had never tried these glasses on before today. So I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, what time are we looking at? 3.23? Is that it? Or... Yeah, there's a sign right yeah, here. Yeah, there's our sign. Put okay. together by you. So, oh, 3.23 is maximum eclipse so we've got to have these on and ready i think it's going to be very cool so if you have not gotten your glasses karen i'm pretty sure you got your glasses but if you haven't gotten your glasses then you can come on over here starting at two unless you're us you can come a little early come right? now come yeah, now what the heck come now sure and we will talk to you and hang out guys i i'm trying to do the cool wearing the glasses thing, you look great in them but you can't see a thing. no you own those glasses can't see a thing one serious point, because we have kind of yes. talked about it and we're having fun with this and this is supposed to be a fun situation. Do not look up into the sun without the glasses. It is problematic. It can cause issues. Also, like we're gonna have people explain the certifications and yeah. everything, because yeah. I almost bought a bunch of bootleg glasses online, because I was like, oh, I can get 50 <laughs> glasses for $37. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. That's bad. You yeah. can get them here get them for free. Yep. I appreciate you letting us hang out. Yeah, Thanks thank you guys. Come back. We're going to draw. Happy it. Eclipse Day. All the good stuff. Happy Eclipse Day. Yeah. You can look up into the sun, just only with your glasses just on. Just with your glasses on. Karen, this is going to be fun. It is. And the sun, FYI, is 109 times bigger than the Earth. So, while it may seem small with the glasses on, it's still huge and powerful. Oh, my God. Karen's been grabbing the Google machine this morning. Oh, it's 865. Thousand miles across, Bill. I can go on on this one all day long, uh -huh. but I thought I'd get to some people okay. who actually know something about the stars. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Independence Visitor Center for the party. Um, let's get up to the experts in Rochester, New York, at the Planetarium, and Mike Jarek is there talking to people. You know, I believe possibly the moon or the sun is 400, 400 times the size of the moon. Or, 
I don't know. Never mind. Hey, I rented people some from Philadelphia. Where are you from? Uh, Port Richmond, Philadelphia. How about you? Port Richmond as well. Are you uh, a couple? We're together. Yeah, we're together. Oh, you're together. Are you married? No. No. Uh, oh, you could you could propose during an eclipse, <laughs> a solar eclipse. That's a good idea. <laughs> okay. Well, you got a few hours to get a ring. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I should probably go find a jewelry Keep going. store now. Yeah. Jewelry sale down on Main Street here in uh, Rochester. Um, why'd you come so far? It's like a six-hour drive. Um, I think this is like a once-in-a-lifetime experience in life, and it was also my birthday weekend, so I was like, what oh. better way to spend it, you know, seeing something that won't happen ever again in my lifetime, where Maybe. I'm like kind of being mad? Well, I think you'll make it. There's another one in 2044. Oh, was it? Not here, though, right? No, you have to travel. You yeah, have to travel yeah, to see it. Yeah, pretty far. Uh, the next time, a, a totality in Philly, I think, is 2079. Yeah, it's it's 2079. Not if I'm lucky. You might make that one. <laughs> I hope so. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. What do you do? Uh, I'm a sailor for, for the Navy. Oh, for the Navy. Yeah. And what do you do? I'm a nurse. I'm okay. a chop. Thank you for your service, both of you. Thank you. Chop is fantastic. Enjoy. Where are you going to sit? Uh, we were, we're still scouting out there. We're walking here in. And then seeing what has the most foot traffic, it what is, has the least it's, coverage. It's kind of like being in Wildwood, where you try to pick out a spot on the beach, <laughs> yeah, you know, on the shore. It, this has been so interesting to watch. People walking in. This whole, see this couple way, way down there. She has a white coat on. They walked around here for about ten minutes, circling until they said, "This is the spot." Just like when you're looking at a piece of sand, right? So hang in there, everybody. Come on. We'll be back in about two. Welcome back. Let's head upstairs. Drew is on our roof. Drew, I have never been to the roof. You have to give us a tour of the roof and what is what we can see from up there. Well, first of all, Karen, it is beautiful up here. I got the eclipse glasses on, not the sunglasses. I'm looking at a bunch of satellite dishes, but more importantly, how about this for a view of Philadelphia and the skies could not be better for the eclipse. 
So here's the deal. We got the blue, but you may not have the black right there. I'm talking the eclipse glasses. So there's things around your home that you can use. I went around my kitchen and I think this is so cool. First of all, I got one of this to make some fresh lemon juice. You can use this to view the eclipse safely. The sun's right up there above me. So you put your back to the sun and then here's what you do. You get anything that has circles in it and you see how it projects right now those circles are regular circles, but during the eclipse, you'll see what the sun looks like right on your plate. So you're looking at your plate and not the sun. So we'll see the crescent shape show up from 208 to 430. And that's one example. I was looking all around my kitchen drawers, a little strainer maybe for some pasta or some soup does the same thing. And hey, maybe you got a colander as well. Uh, I like the plastic one over the metal one because metal can reflect some of the light. So with plastic, there's no possibility of any of that light going back into your eyes. But I also had the metal one too, as I was kind of testing things out. I had one of these. So these are some items around your home you can use to view the eclipse safely. And there's so many different things. In fact, coming up in about a half an hour, we're going to raid the pantry because there's things inside your pantry food wise that you can use to view the eclipse. And speaking of viewing the eclipse, you know how people have been going all around the country. They've been waiting years for this. So we caught up with a guy who travels for every single solar eclipse. And you got to hear more about his experiences. With a telescope in hand, Dr. Mark Bartorp is excited for the total solar eclipse. I'm just about busting. <laughs> it is Yosemite. It is the Grand Canyon all rolled into one times 100. That's how fantastic it looks. And that's coming from a guy that loves his national parks. This is the third time that Mark will see a total solar eclipse. We asked him to take us back to 2017 when he saw the last one in Wyoming. When the moon covers up the sun, uh, the sky turns a sort of royal blue-black color. So it appears like a sunrise and a sunset on the horizon for 360 degrees. This year, Mark's in Central Texas. That's where a total solar eclipse is happening for the first time in more than 100 years. There's going to be millions of people coming this way to view the eclipse. And if that turns out to be true, well, the cities and the counties around Austin, they've already been preparing preparing for what crowds will bring. With the increase in visitors, there could be a degraded or limited cell service in the area. Um, we won't know until um, that weekend of. Then there's what happens after the eclipse ends. What Mark dealt with in Wyoming in 2017 is going to play out in Texas and across the country. It was wall to wall traffic, bumper to bumper traffic for, for over 100 miles. Hope all those folks have a full tank of gas and some extra food in the car. When I drove home from Tennessee right after seeing the last total solar eclipse, it took double the amount of time it usually takes to get home. What a trip that was. Yeah, it took about, oh, I would say close to 14 hours, not because of gridlock, just because of so many cars on the road as I was driving up from Tennessee. So that's just a taste of what people were experiencing who drove out to the Tallinn areas like Mike Jarek. But for us here at home, 90% of the sun going away. Here's exactly what's happening. Thanks to some post notes, I got the sun right here. And here's the moon. And by the way, if you're wondering, sometimes you can see the moon up during the day. Not today because it's a new moon. So the moon is behind the sun. So that's why we're able to see the eclipse. And this is what happens beginning around 208. The moon starts coming up, blocking out some of the sun that's behind Earth. So the moon gets between the sun and Earth and then boom, there's 90% of the sun being blocked at 320-ish. And then up that moon goes and the sun is back at 430. Can't wait for that a little bit later, Karen. So wait, Drew, what was it like when you saw it when it was out in Tennessee? So in Tennessee, it got as dark as dust during the totality. Lights came on in the valley below, and it was so cool to see that. And I suspect here it'll be like about 10 minutes prior to dust. That's how dark it'll get when 90% of the sun disappears behind the moon. How cool. All right, so um, you've already seen it. Thank you, Drew. And Mike Jarek is about to witness it in full. He's up there in Rochester where they'll have that totality. Um, so it's something to look forward to. Oh, Rocket Man. Um, but here's the deal. 
Is the, is the sun out in Philadelphia? Heck yeah, it is bright and sunny. You should have stayed uh, here. It's always the way, you know. I mean, I'll have a great view, Mike. I know. Everyone here in the Delaware and Lehigh I Valley. I rolled the dice <laughs> because a 90 percenter with a clear sky might beat a totality with a cloudy sky, if you know what I'm saying. I do know exactly what you're saying. Well, And I think we'll have a really good place to, I mean, I think people here are going to be really lucky. We'll have a good yeah. view. Rochester's gray. I could have warned you. And Sioux Serio, too. It, it, well, I know. You told me. But, you know, it, it was sure bright and sunny yesterday and sunny till about two hours ago here. But you, you never know. We're three hours away. Uh, I just came in to uh, take, uh, take a load off. And it's a donut and cookie combo depicting an eclipse. That's fun. I've never had an eclipse donut. Yeah. So, hold on. Put that off to the side. Let's go out and check the clock. Okay. Real quickly here. Because um, I'm ready to do this. Aren't we all ready to do this? After all these years? Come on. Come on. Where'd the, where'd the clock go? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. On the bend. On your right. Here? All right. Three hours and 43 minutes. <laughs> we'll be ready. Oh, that's but fine. But will there be sun? But will there be sun? Hi, everybody. We need a countdown. There's our countdown clock. <laughs> Do you have one? We just chucked it up. It's right there at the top right of our screen. We've got it counting down, too. Is this the Cornell Astronomy yeah. Club? Um, Who's yeah, a good yeah, spokesperson? Yeah, this is the Cornell Astronomy Club. Shall we talk to you? Sure. What's your name? Hi, so my name is Jack Quackenbush. I'm here with the Cornell Astronomical Society. Um, we currently have some telescopes and other things out here. Hold on. This thing is made of cardboard. What, what are you going to see through that? Yeah, so this telescope itself isn't exactly a standard telescope. It's what's called a spectrograph. That's what this cardboard thing is here. Um, it was built by a member in, uh, not a member, uh, the grandson of one of our members in 1960. 1960. 63 wow. for the 1970 eclipse and what it does is it takes a flash spectrum of the sun's of the sun is that the eclipse. guy that did it yeah that's the man who did it that's william c atkinson handsome man yeah that's in 1970 i think right um 63. and i i think this is his original toolbox look yeah, at that it's old that is old my um, dad had one of so those. That is a picture of what we hope to get. You can see the distinct emission lines. Now, how are you going to get that has. from an eclipse? Yeah. So when the sun has its like when it's eclipsing, you get these like flashes of the sun of the light coming out, and we can get the light goes in through right up there and gets put onto what's called the diffraction gradient in the back, which basically breaks the light up, and then it gets put into a display we have back here. That okay. Then we record on our phones by putting it in this cardboard box. Now, Jared, if you missed that because you're videotaping, you want me to explain it all over again? I, 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 I can take it from the beginning yeah, if you I want. Think you got yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> so, what do you want to be when you graduate, Cornell? Well, that's a great question. I think I'd like to be. I mean, I'm studying physics. I want to be a physicist, but astronomy has become a passion of mine as of recently with the Cornell Astronomical Society. Have you ever seen an eclipse? I have not. I don't remember the 2017 one. I think I, our school didn't let us out. So oh, this no. This is my first eclipse. Well, what do you think? You know, I got hope, Mr. Atkinson. He's 99 years old. He's wishing us luck. Is he um, st he's still alive? Yeah, 99 years old. He was talking to us earlier today over email. Um, That's an awesome story. Yeah, no, he's a. You never great know. Guy. I don't know, Karen. I'm really uh, believe in what you're saying. It's always gray here. Well, and I, I think it's gone? neat. A lot of the people came up from Cornell. I was getting emails from the hotel. You know, they also have a famous hotel school yeah. there in their own hotel, the Statler. And they're like saying, stay there um, in Ithaca or in that region where um, Cornell is Ithaca. Sure. And then go up there to Rochester. Ithaca, yeah. You also have RIT up there. I bet you have, there's a lot of uh, University of Rochester, a lot of smart kids up there. Sure. There's a whole bunch of smart kids. All right. Let's see. Hold on a second. Right? Not from Rochester, right? uh, no, no, F Philadelphia, F Philadelphia. 
All right. Well, we can let you scope her out the, and find the some woman, interesting folks. The woman uh, who runs this place, she's the CEO, mm -hmm. Hillary Olson. Um, and she was the one that was at the Franklin Institute for years and years and used to watch you on TV, Karen. She Aww. remembers you. That's so nice. She says the best place to watch this thing is on this grassy knoll over here. You know and what so they also word has spread that that's the place to be. Well, it's nice to sit on a blanket and have your picnic blanket. They also have coming up there later. Yeah. Um, they have a famous lilac festival that goes on for ten days. We used to cover oh. that when I worked up there for like. Almost Maybe I'll stay. <laughs> it's in May. <laughs> It'd be uh, lovely. I can send you back. It's still awesome. Did I it won't tell be sunny. you um, <laughs> that those glasses are not just for show? You can walk under there I during they the might. eclipse. And be safe. I thought that they were the real deal. I thought that that might be the case. Yeah. That's really cool. We'll get a picture with that. That's your Instagrammable moment right there um, with the Absolutely. big glasses. Absolutely. All right, Mike, you've been well, doing a great job. Well, starting to fill job. in. All right, it is filling no, in. thank you. All right, what are we going to go to um, at 11.40? I think oh, we're having a lot of fun streaming. Um, let's check in with Hank Flynn. Hi, Hank. And you're at our hey. world-famous... Franklin Institute. You couldn't pick a better place to be, honestly, in the weather, Karen. Honestly, it just gets better and better. We're on 95, 96 percentile for weather out here today. Whatever eclipse there is to see, we're going to get every ounce of it here in Philadelphia. And how are we going to know? We're going to be with a man that everybody wants to talk to, Derek Pitts, the chief astronomer here at Franklin Institute in the Fields Planetarium. Welcome and thank you so much. He and I have been talking for 10 minutes about this. What do we hope to learn from this eclipse that we've never learned before, and how will we get there with it? Our tech is so much better now. Visually, we're going to see this in a way we've never seen it. Well, between the visual information that we'll pick up and the other scientific data we'll pick up, we'll learn a little bit more about how our atmosphere reacts to a situation where there's less sunlight coming in, in this case during an eclipse. The other thing we'll uh, be able to learn more about is how the sun's atmosphere, the corona, behaves at different points in the sun's 11-year cycle of activity. Now, the corona, it's not just for our own scientific interest. The corona of the sun, we talk about things like sun flares and sun spots. These have direct impacts on the weather that we feel here on planet Earth. Well, we know, we, know. we know that the sun is a direct influence on the Earth's weather. To what degree we can pick out whether it's flares or prominences or sunspots and even the activity in the corona, we still have more parts of the puzzle to try to figure out and satellites like the ones that are being launched today are going to help us understand that. It's amazing and guys, 2024 being what it is, Derek tells me that millions of pictures are going to be taken from this. Most of them databased in different ways and different things happening with those. From that we will learn, but also I, the curiosity with me. We're going to get pictures from space of Earth during the eclipse. What will Earth look like from space? This is a really interesting view when you look at an eclipse from space. What it's going to look like is it's going to look like a brown dot on the surface of the planet. But really, I should say a brown circle, because it's not going to look like a little dot. It's going to be look like a large, diffuse circle covering the area where the eclipse is passing. It won't look like a band. It'll just be the circle no. where the shadow is for that moment. Right, that's right, that's right. So don't expect it to look like a black dot moving along a narrow strip. It'll look like a wide circle. And you'll see these pictures probably tomorrow, immediately. Guys, it's this expertise that makes him the busiest man in Philadelphia today. I'm going to hog him while I can. T tell us from your expert standpoint, we've got three NASA rockets, not just one, but three of them. And I've seen them. They're smaller, faster. They're missiles, really, uh, filled with sensors uh, and, and, and instruments on them. What do we hope to learn from them? I think we did this the last time they went up. But again, the tech has changed so much. Well, the thing is that w the more data we can collect about how the atmosphere behaves under changing conditions, the better we can understand our own environment and our own atmosphere. And this is really important for us today to be able to understand our atmosphere because there's so many different things that are affecting the atmosphere. Our understanding of it will allow us to better take care of the atmosphere. So all of the rocketry stuff that's happening to get sensors into the atmosphere, even to study the corona, all help us to better understand our atmosphere. Guys, we're always smarter for conversation with Derek Pence. Last quick question to yeah. you. The child inside of you must be flipping out, man. Today's game day. What a great day. You must be really jacked up. Hey, look, this is an <laughs> awesome experience. Sure. No matter how you look at it, no matter whether it's 90% or 100% or 50%, it's an awesome science experience that's happening 
like the mechanics of our universe. We can see it right here in front of us. So everybody ought to take part in this. It's awesome. And we're all going to participate in it today, whether we like it or not. Philly's going to be part of this whole eclipse experiment today. We'll see how it goes. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Hank. Wait, you hey, don't let him go. I have a question. So I've seen okay, conflicting go, information. Can we take, we all want to take pictures on our smartphones. Is there a way to do that right. safely? What's your advice for smartphone photography here? What's a safe way to do it? Filter over the lenses. You have to have a filter over the lenses. You can't take a photograph like a selfie with the camera pointed at the sun and you're back to the sun. You've got to have a filter over your camera lenses. Can you get a pair of Eclipse glasses and hold them over your iPhone? You certainly can do that, yep. There you go, Kerr. I knew he'd have a solution. He always has like the, the easy solution. Exactly. Thank you guys. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Also, if you have questions for us, you can use our hashtag. Um, we'll go with uh, Fox 29. Good day. After show. Yeah. G good day. So we'll look for those because we'd love to answer your questions because I know you have a lot. We certainly have a lot and we have so much more in store. We're going to go around the country and take a look as people get ready for this eclipse. We'll be right back. Welcome back at 1148. And as promised, um, we're going all around this country to follow what it looks like and what people are doing and how they're getting ready. So let's head out to Indy. We've got Robert Ray, who's there now. Uh, good morning still to you. Good morning. Yeah, it is gorgeous here in Indianapolis. Look at that, the motor speedway uh, behind me. There are, and I'm not kidding you when I say this, like 50 to 70,000 people uh, that have come in uh, to this incredible historic speedway to experience uh, this total solar eclipse that will happen at 3.06 p.m. this afternoon, and we're, we're lucky. Uh, these skies, as you see, and all the people 
are just gorgeous. Temps about uh, be about almost 70 degrees by the time this eclipse occurs uh, in the path of totality. And you know what? If you want to tune in to some pretty cool immersive coverage, let me tell you why you should into Fox Weather. Uh, we've got this camera, okay? Uh, Lloyd Alford is behind uh, the camera shooting me. During the eclipse, I'm going to have my eye trained up into uh, the eclipse as the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, and that's what creates that uh, total eclipse, the totality. We've got a solar filter on here, and I mean to tell you, uh, the shot is as tight as it's going to get. It'll take up your entire screen, and you'll be able to experience it as I'm sort of giving you a play-by-play -play like a sports announcer would uh, of the actual eclipse, and you'll have many people looking up into the sky. Hopefully, they'll have protective glasses like this on, and they can look up so they don't damage their eyes, and they can see uh, this celestial event. Darkness will fall. Uh, the birds may kind of quiet down, and there will be just a sense of peace. Uh, if it's anything like 2017, uh, the previous total solar eclipse, uh, that will be the aura and the feeling here. Amazing when you think about it. 15 states that will be in the totality, over 30 million people. Uh, we'll see this about 115 miles wide is the totality. And the great news is all lower 48 states will experience some of this phenomenon. The total solar eclipse. Won't see it again in the U.S. for another 20 years. Look up and be safe. What a day. Good way. Good way to start off the week for a Monday, right? All right I have questions. So, <laughs> Robert, where are you from? I'm originally from Chi-Town, uh, grew up in uh, Connecticut as well, but live down in Atlanta. There you go, all over. And so have you seen the eclipse back in 2017, last time around? I did. I was in Hopkinsville, Kentucky uh, for that, for that total solar eclipse, and then covered the annular eclipse in San Antonio uh, this past October. So, yeah, I think in total this is my fifth eclipse uh, as a uh, professional uh, TV crazy man. <laughs> Can you rate them? How about that? Let me have you rate them. Which ones were the best and why? I, I think Hopkinsville was was pretty amazing. I wasn't expecting at that point the darkness uh, that, that, that fell upon where I was in the totality. And I was shocked at how still everything became. And the sky almost like a grayish bluish uh, tint was not expecting that kind of feel and and I got to tell you this too uh, people get very very emotional during this I, I wasn't one of those people I was just in awe of you know our atmosphere and the moon and the sun uh, but there are people that this becomes uh, kind of a Zen moment for them and I think that's why we're seeing you know so many people here at the Indianapolis Speedway uh, really amazing that there are spots all over the country like this uh, that people will be able to see I mean you guys are going to get a great glimpse of this as well in Philly heck yeah we will we're looking forward to it Robert thanks a lot and thanks for answering my questions I'm a very you know curious person so thank you <laughs> and we'll probably check back with you on um, the course uh, over the course of this day let's take a quick break and we'll be right back
back, 1154. Let's punch up Niagara Falls. Uh, maybe we'll get a sight of the Maid of the Mist, that ship that goes underneath it. So it looks like we're, our view is from the top up here as we're looking out um, instead of the, you know, they had both sides, the USA side. I'm guessing that that is the American side, not the Canadian side. Um, that is confirmed. So look at all the people. Got That's a great place to gather. So that's from where Mike is in, in Rochester. You know, you go up to Buffalo and a little further. So I like the guy juggling. Isn't that so festive how people, where it's really like that atmosphere where people are just going out and bringing a picnic and your lunch and um, enjoying what you can see. And certainly they're bundled up there a little cooler as you head on up to Niagara Falls. Uh, slowly I turn step by step. So as we take a live look there, let's get over to Drew, um, who always has you know great perspective and experiments. Um, you have the glasses there, Drew? Sure do. For anyone here at the station who comes up to the roof, we're going to have those approved glasses. There was a list from the Astronomical Society. That's the American Astronomical Society. And they went and they rated glasses from different folks that made them that be the most safe. There's a certain code on some of these glasses that we have online at Fox 29. But I would also double check to see if it's on that list just to make sure you got the most safe glasses. And Carrie, you were talking about juggling. I don't know if I can juggle some of these Eclipse glasses. Let's see here. No, I don't think it works up here with me. I think I need to learn that skill a little bit more. But here's what you can do if you don't have any of those Eclipse glasses. You can still view the Eclipse safely with some things you might have around the house. First of all, if you got a plate just like this, we did this earlier on Good Day Philadelphia. We have the instructions at fox29.com. You get another paper plate, and what you do is with the pen, you poke a little hole through it. So here, I'll do it live with you guys. Here's a pen, here's a plate, and what you want to do is you want to have a tiny little hole, just like that, boom. And what's going to happen is the sun will come through that. You're not looking up at the sun through it. No, no, no. The sun's at your back. You let that little hole shine a tiny bit of light. See that very tiny circle? And that will show you what the sun will look like during the eclipse. Right now it's a circle because our sun's a circle. But during the eclipse, we'll see the sun get blocked out. And you'll see a crescent a little bit of light shining onto the plate. And there's some other things you might have in your pantry that you can use. I love this. So here's what I got. I got a box of knockoff Cheez-Its, because they were cheaper. And I got in the box of some knockoff Cheerios as well, and they both work. I think this is so cool. First, let's get the Cheez-It, because if you haven't had Cheez-Its in a while, they have a little hole right there in the center. It'll do the same thing. This little hole will project a little spot, and I can even make maybe some animals with my hand right there. We're gonna be talking about animals in just a second, how they react to the Eclipse. And look at that little hole through the Cheez-It. It's another way that you can see the eclipse safely. Because look, we're never looking at the sun. You know, your sunglasses won't work. Welder's glass, I was testing it out. Doesn't seem to be dark enough. How about a Cheerio, just since we got them right there. Who doesn't have a Cheerio in the pantry? It does the same little effect, just like that. Oh, first there's the okay side. It's tough for me to get the Cheerio and the light at the right angle. There it is. I just think that is the coolest thing. And you know, it's not just the pantry items that you have as well. Maybe you do some smoking, talking some barbecue. We found this in our backyard because we love doing some grilling on Good Day Philadelphia. And this right here will do the same thing. This can project some circles of what the sun looks like. So cool to see that. So while we can look at it, how do animals react? Even though the eclipse puts a smile on our face, not all animals act the same. When I saw the total solar eclipse back in Tennessee, all of a sudden, the birds stopped chirping when it got as dark as dusk. So let's see what else animals did during the 2017 eclipse. When the eclipse happens, we'll be looking up. But how will animals react? Back in 2017, when we had the last total solar eclipse, scientists studied how zoo animals reacted in South Carolina when the skies went dark. They say Galapagos tortoises started breeding during the peak. Giraffes started to gallop and other animals displayed behaviors connected with dusk. Some of the animals behaved as if evening had come, so they went into their nighttime routine. Some of the animals made strange calls, the siamangs. They made a type of vocalization that we had never heard before. I was in Tennessee for the full eclipse, and the birds stopped singing when it got dark. Back in South Carolina, the flamingos at the zoo did something interesting. The flamingos all gathered around their chicks during the eclipse, like they were trying to protect the chicks. And it'd be really interesting to see if other flamingos do that or if other flocking birds do the same type of behavior. This time, 
Researchers are going to study how the eclipse impacts animals in Texas. They want to see if the behaviors they witnessed before in South Carolina point toward larger patterns. This time around, we're going to look at some of the same types of animals. Texas is the first place in the United States that the eclipse will be passing through. There are other really exciting places that these types of observations could be done. And to that point, what about your pets? Are you taking your dog out to chill with you? How will your dogs react? Essentially everything we know about animal behavior during the eclipse could reasonably be regarded as anecdotal because there's so little information about it. Well, this gives us another opportunity to see how your pets react and how all the animals react. And we want to know. Let us know. Send it to us on our socials. I'll be doing some research. You can safely take clips with your cell phone and what your animals do, either your pets or around you. So share it with us and we'll share in our 5 o'clock news. That is the latest from the gorgeous rooftop with these perfectly blue skies, Karen. We'll send it back over to you. Drew, thank you. All right, let's head up to cloudy Rochester to Mike Jarek. So, Mike, did you hear that the animals, their behavior that they do, that the, what the Galapagos turtles do during the eclipse? What do they do? They get it on. Oh, they get it on? Now, see, I think it might be interesting to do that in that three and a half minutes. You know what I mean? I, I think so. Obviously, you know what I mean. that's what the turtle, that's, you know, it's, that's, they yeah. get frisky. It's a good thing. I, you have to have a little view outside. I, and I believe there's plenty of people in America or around the world, they're going to do just that, time it just right, in that three and a half minutes. We had to move away from the band. There's a, a very good band, but they are loud. But I just, we can give you some of the atmosphere around here. I mean, people are starting to get more excited. Did, uh, did Drew say reporting live from the crystal clear skies of Philadelphia <laughs> on the roof? I didn't want to rub it in, but that was exactly how he oh, threw God. it. <laughs> and it's very clear in Indianapolis. Now you've never heard of Channel 29? We're out of Philadelphia. We came all the way from Philadelphia to Rochester. Well, I came all the way from California. Oh, you beat us then. You get the prize. What, t what city? My name is uh, Simi Valley, California. I know where that's uh, part of, uh, outside of Los Angeles. Yes. Calabasas. Yes. A thousand Oaks. You come and visit me when you're, okay. were you from there? No, I lived in uh, L.A. for a while, oh, about okay. 10 years. Well, my story is that I came up here to be a, a school counselor, and uh, after I retired, I volunteered. No husband, no dogs, no cats, no kids. My passion was travel. I've been to over 75 countries. But I then moved to California because I did not want to be found dead in bed. And so out there, I continued a meeting here with these... Uh, uh, with this committee and so I said I have to come back so I flew back here and I've been doing everything I've just finished my volunteership and you know what even if it's cloudy whatever it is it's going to be great because I think positive and say it's great just seeing all these people meeting can you believe meeting people coming from Philadelphia to record this fantastic and I think you all should have a good time and I love it thank God and when you know what the Californians say, how could you handle that snow? You know what I say? What do you say? I say, that is love sent from the angels. Yes, And love. they say, okay, we'll accept it. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Stay well. God bless you. You know, we have so much in common. We both have such a positive attitude about everything. It's good I to meet listen. somebody like myself. I could listen to her Should I all tell day. them my age? No, 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 you say whatever you want. I'm going to be 84 on September 8th. Wish September me a 8th. happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> so... You came here for the eclipse, though? Yes. 3,000 miles. 2,500. Yeah. Why? Because the eclipse is memorable. It's important. And not only that, but I knew, I knew coming to the eclipse, I would be able to run into a lot of people who I had known. And you know what? They're all doing well and Good. healthy. Good. Well, I'm glad I met you. Yes. You are? Yeah. yeah, I am, actually. Your name? Mike. Mike, I'm Josephine. Josephine, let's hug. Mike, ask Josephine you, after, after those, I can't believe, 84 years old. I what feel a, better about things now. I feel better because she, like you said, the sun is, we can kind of see the sun. Yeah. It's just a little cloudy. Yeah. And you know what? It, what, what does it matter? It's just it the idea matter. that you're here with the experience. That's right. And I would never think of staying home watching this by myself. No. I want to be out here with all these people. Exactly. Well, and I happening. have met connections. I made connections with people from Simi Valley that are actually living there. Yeah. And I have 
Do you know that there that uh, Cornell sent up eight buses? Oh, uh, I saw that. And a bunch of buses came up from Princeton, from our area, too. Right. I just haven't been able to find them. Well, good talking to okay, you. Okay, stay well. Is you this all? Uh, yeah, we're done. All right, get it on. Let me tell you about New Jersey. Oh, hold on. <laughs> okay, Mike, she's going to tell you some the real scoop now. Watch it. She might have some choice words right there, her feisty, saucy language. That's Sue, how about her? I want to do wow. that. 70 countries. <sighs> if feisty. I make it to 84, that's how I want to be. 100%. Traveling, excited, positive. I'm going to have to change my attitude quick. Hold on. Anyway, uh, here's a look at the path of the solar eclipse. It's going to go this way. And uh, there still is a chance this afternoon of some storms popping up in Dallas. But that was a big concern. Right now it's sunny. Same for Little, Little Rock, Paducah, Kentucky. Indianapolis is cloudy. Cleveland, Ohio, not so much. And it's cloudy in Rochester. Temperatures are pretty good. 71 in Dallas, 69 degrees in Nashville. And uh, it's in the 60s up there around Buffalo and Rochester. So again, this is the path of the storm. We're looking at radar for precipitation. And it seems like most of it has moved south and east of the path of totality. So folks in this part of Tennessee and down here in Louisiana and Mississippi may have a hard time seeing whatever percentage they get uh, of the eclipse because because of these pop up showers and thunderstorms. But so far it's dry in Little Rock, Paducah. We go up along the path here. Cleveland is dry and we do have a couple of showers in the Buffalo area, the south towns of Buffalo here. So hopefully they'll dissipate and hopefully the clouds will dissipate. But it looks pretty socked in with clouds over Rochester right now. Now here's our area. It looks like a little area of green moved into Lancaster County. We do not have rain in our forecast for today, but we could see some of those clouds move in just around eclipse time. But I wanted to see north and west of the city is where we have the best chance of seeing cloud cover. But this is Allentown, the view from Allentown, and it's looking pretty darn good at the moment. And it's 58 degrees, so pleasant temperatures outside. 61 in Philadelphia, 58 in Trenton, 59 in Wilmington. Doylestown's around 60 degrees. So for us, we'll get around 90%. It won't be full totality, but pretty darn close. And uh, we'll get that little sliver of sun peeking out from behind the moon to the left at 323 because that's the peak of what we're going to get in Philadelphia. But you can start watching it with your glasses at 208 and it ends at 435. So it's quite the show put on by Mother Nature. And let's look at this cloud cover situation. So it looks like by three or four o'clock there will be plenty of breaks in the clouds in our area. We should see everything just fine. And then tomorrow looks good as well. Uh, we'll have a lot of stories to tell. Where were you when the eclipse happened? A real quick look at the forecast after today, right? Uh, really, really warm tomorrow. Feeling like May, 77 degrees, around 70 on Wednesday. And then some rain rolls in later on in the week should dry out for the weekend. So happy Eclipse Day. We've got so much more coming right up.
welcome back on this historic Monday the 8th, taking a live look at Niagara Falls. Um, people all bundled up, bringing the family and all of their cameras and getting ready for uh, the big viewing there because they'll be in the whole path where it will be getting very dark. Let's get over to one of the other watch parties in our neck of the woods. Bill Anderson is on the roof, um, the deck of the Independence Visitor Center. Hey, Karen. And it's early now, so they're just getting everything set up. We told you last time we spoke to you that this is the rundown of what's going on here at the Independence Visitor Center. Actually, a couple people have started to come in now to grab their glasses. They've got a set up so that the kids can come over and draw and customize their glasses. They're giving them away to people for their viewing party that starts in just a little bit. But when I was speaking to you before, we were talking about the challenges of actually seeing the eclipse. Sometimes it can be influenced by the clouds. It can be influenced if you're visually impaired. There's a lot of reasons why you can't see things, but there's this really cool machine and a group of folks who have this set up so that you can actually experience the eclipse if it's cloudy, if you're visually impaired, all of these things. I'm gonna get out of the way. They're gonna demonstrate it for us. Uh, first, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kathy Person. I'm the head, head of education programs at the American Philosophical Society. Um, and we are demonstrating the light sound device. Uh, we actually borrowed it from our colleagues at the Science History Institute. They were very generous in loaning it to us. Um, this device was actually created by a collaboration at Harvard. So if you're interested in learning more of the light sound project, you want to check out their website. Very Let cool. Me... We're going to demonstrate it, but first, we didn't introduce you. Oh, that's you fine. Are... Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Adriana Link. I'm the assistant director of library and museum programming at the American Philosophical Society. So there's a whole plan for all there's of whole this. whole plan for the day. Okay, so this machine, explain to us what it actually does. So this machine uh, reads light levels and translates them into sound. So I'm going to show you um, or demonstrate the different sounds that happen as the, the bright light disappears, gets dim, just like what would happen in the eclipse. Um, and so we're going to have this outside later today to absorb the light levels of the eclipse and be able to sonify the experience for everyone. So it's the, the eclipse in sound and visual on the screen. Exactly, exactly. All right, this is cool. So let's see. So explain to us as you're doing it. So I'm going to turn this, I'm going to turn this on. Okay. All right, and we can hear the humming. And I'm, going right. to, and I'm going to turn on the software. So we've got the visual component here. Now I'm going to make it super sunny and bright. So and was. so that was the light getting darker, and actually now you can hear a little clicking. It's very faint. So the clicking is what? The clicking is when the eclipse will be at its darkest. So then the town, let's try it. Can we do it one more time? So the, the bright light is when it's sunny. So this right now, let's leave it there for a second. Let's get the bright light. So this is at its brightest. This is when it's sunny outside. So you can hear that. And then as it starts to get darker. And then eclipse. That's cool. And that will all be set up here. We're going to get on the conversation yeah, also. Sure. So that'll all be set up here so that people can experience. Yeah, it. so we're right across the street, right from Independence Mall at the American Philosophical Society. So we'll have the garden will be open, the Jefferson Garden. We'll have uh, the light sound device will be ready so you can experience it in person. We'll also have activities. We'll have some black and white cookies to kind of mirror the, uh, the shadow effect. And, uh, you know, we hope that folks uh, will, will come by and check us out and see some of the other activities we've got going on throughout the week. So one of the cool things going on just right up the street, you can come here, you can get your glasses, you can draw, you can experience it here, and then just walk right up the street That's right. and experience more as well. What has the response been to people who have kind of, like this is a cool way for people who may not be able to see everything to experience it? 
Um, well, uh, we're getting some positive feedback about our event. People are excited to, to come over. Um, we've had a few inquiries about it. So, yeah, please come and join us and come experience it yourself in person. Very cool. I appreciate you both doing this. So this is a way, Karen, if it's cloudy, no problem. If you are visually impaired, this would be a good way to experience it. They've got you covered. A lot of cool stuff going on throughout this process. This is another one of them. I have three questions. So we go to a lot of okay. places and museums here on Fox 29 and Good Day. What do they do at the Philosophical Society? This is a question for them. Do they like ponder the meaning of life or what happens there? <laughs> Karen is asking specifically, what do you do at the Philosophical Society, like pondering the meaning of life? What goes on there? <laughs> uh, so we were founded in 1743 by Benjamin Franklin, and the term philosophical at that point actually refers to science. So we do science. In fact, we've been uh, observing astronomical phenomenon since our founding. Um, uh, David Rittenhouse, one of our early members, actually uh, observed the transit of Venus in 1769 and recorded it all and published it in our publication. So, yeah, that's so they've been doing this for a minute, Karen. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no worries. So we're the oldest learned society in the United States, founded by Benjamin Franklin in 1743. So in addition to a lot of great programming, including today's, uh, we do have uh, grants and fellowships. We have conferences. We have a publications division. We have a museum that's opening this Friday. So um, please come and, and check out all the things that we're doing at the APS. It's right in the middle of Philadelphia. Yeah. Thank All right. you. Perfect. Other questions? Right now, I have to, I'll have to come back to those because I have to get to Connor, who's up in Buffalo, and I'm dying to see <laughs> if it's sunnier in Buffalo than it is in Rochester. Bill, thank you. Connor, um, mm -hmm. good afternoon now at 1217. So we have a reporter in Rochester, and he's complaining it's a little cloudy. Set the scene for us there. Where are you? What's it like? Hi, Karen. We're right in the heart of Buffalo right now, and people are on their toes with the weather here. We saw the sun poke out just a little bit. We even had a few raindrops at one point. It's a little bit cloudy right now, but we've still got a couple more hours to go before that eclipse starts. So people have their fingers crossed here that things will clear up a little bit. It'll still be an interesting day no matter what. When that sun becomes fully blocked by the moon, you'll still be able to tell when it happens. It'll go dark. It'll still be a very interesting experience. Uh, we've heard when that happens, you can even hear the birds go quiet thinking it's nighttime. Uh, a variety of different reactions from the people watching too. So we're in a beautiful park right here where people are setting up already. They have been since the morning trying to get a front row seat, hoping they'll have a clear view of this. You know, and that's the case, uh, like you mentioned, in Rochester and in areas all across the country in this path of totality that have brought millions of people out, including in the state of New York. They're expecting upwards of a million people. They've been warning people about the traffic issues, telling people to top off their gas tanks, have extra cash. They say cell service could be strained. So it'll be really interesting to see um, how even some of the larger cities in that belt are able to handle all of these crowds. But so far, things have been pretty calm here. So how far are you away from the stadium, the Bills stadium? Uh, we're, st <laughs> we're still a little ways uh, from there. That's outside the uh, downtown area a little bit. So. Um, they might have a little bit of a different view, but I do think it is a little bit cloudy all over the city. We know Niagara Falls is also a very popular spot for this. Uh, the Canadian side of Niagara Falls, that area actually declared a state of emergency so they could get resources faster. You know, a lot of these officials and agencies are treating this almost as if there's a major uh, weather event coming. They want to be ready just in case because they're really not sure what to expect. Um, you know, if these total solar eclipses only hit the same spots every so often. Uh, the last time we had one in the United States was 2017 and the next one for most of the country, not till 2044. So I think that's the reason you're seeing this become such a big deal this year is we're most for the most part, we're not going to see one in the US for another 20 years. And kind of the state of emergency because so many people are coming. Is that the issue? It's not because we're, we, we know that like life is going to go on. Yes. Right? Yeah, just so yes, people. that's okay. exactly right. Yeah, Con they're worried about traffic congestion and, and all sorts of things. Connor, thank you. We appreciate it. And hopefully we'll get a glimpse there. Let's bop down um, a little bit. Was it 80 up there? Is that the big road that you go on? Whatever. Is the New York Thruway up that neck of the woods to Mike Whatever Jarek? Whatever road it is. Whatever road. Yes. I, it's, you're gonna, I, I think you're going to get about the same report you got from him. Because there's, you know, how close Buffalo is to 100%. Rochester. Hour. But, but at least 
I mean, th there is light up there. You do see the sun. You know what I mean? I think it, it's, it's going to be fine. It's not raining or anything. Yeah, it's going to be fine. I think fine. it's going to be fine, too. And it's going to get dark. Uh, these folks came all the way from uh, Maryland. What's your name? I'm Anna. And who are the girls? Uh, this, I'm a boy. Oh, you're a boy. This is Enzo and Alice. Uh, Alice? Yes. Alice? Yeah, I have a, um, my uh, grandson, Jack, has long hair like this. He wants to be a YouTuber. Does he want to be a YouTuber? Uh, I don't know. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, a geologist. A geologist? Well, how perfect. Yeah. So you came a long way from Maryland. Yep. Why? Uh, because uh, I knew this was happening right after my birthday, and I thought this was uh, our Happy trip. birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I looked into it seven years ago, and I saw it was happening, and I made a promise that we would try to oh, do it. she? She is five. Okay. He is seven, so he was a baby. Seven, the last a baby. One. Oh, and you got somebody else? <laughs> oh, there's somebody else back here. <laughs> Who's that? This is, Noah. This is Noah. He needs to take a nap. How old is Noah? Noah. One and a half. One and a half. Okay, Noah, I want to crawl in there with you. I need to take a nap, too. Have fun. Thank you. Awesome. Do you think they'll remember? Yeah, they will. They will, yeah. yeah. That's why you're here. Hi, now what did you have to say? Uh, why, why are you here? To watch the eclipse. Why is it important for, for you? Because it, it's been like 99 years since there's been one eclipse. Yeah. And this is a total solar eclipse. And in 2017, there was a partial. Right. So this is the first time I'm ever seeing a total. Oh, this is the total one, yeah. yeah. The total solar. Um, well, you can kind of see it. You, oh, yeah. we, we can see we can see enough of the sun, Mom, that uh, I think we'll be all right. And we have a little less than two hours. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. Where are you from? Uh, Pittsburgh, New York. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Thank you, Mom. So this has kind of turned, the closer we get, it's turned into kind of a uh, party. We've got drummers, the band's playing, and people just milling around, stuffing their faces, getting ready to watch the uh, eclipse. Hi, where are you from? Go ahead. We're from Wellventions, or from Rochester. Oh, from, do you yeah. live here? Yes. Yeah. We are people What do you Rochester. think about the influx of all these people into your town? I feel like it's a great thing. It's a community of people that you never really get to see all. Yeah, so. like people from Philly. Yes. That's where I'm from. I have family there, too. Yeah, where do they live? So they live, like, closer to the outer edge of Philly. I forgot the town name, yeah. but... But on the outskirts. Yes. Yeah. Are you a Buffalo fan? Buffalo Bills? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Have a good time. You, too. Hello. Do you know what they call their police athletic building in Rochester? What is it? It's like right out of like a superhero film. It's called the Hall of Justice. Like meanwhile, back at the, the Hall of Hall Justice. The Hall of Justice. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of police officers. Where are you from? Philadelphia. You're from Philly? Yes. I'm, what? From. I'm from Philly. Wow, hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, the Fox Station in Philly. Okay. Where do you live in Philly? Rydal. And why'd you come up here? Why do you think? <laughs> I know we, 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 we're both, we both came up from Philly. We could have chosen a different city, I guess. We could have. But then you never know. Well, you know, this is a nice thing right here. I it found is. this, uh, you know, it's looking around. What's the best place to go? Yeah. You got this festival. It's the organized. Festival was here. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I know. Seemed like better than just out in the parking lot someplace. You yeah. could have someone telling you what's going on. And it's just well, good to see you. Good I'll, to see you too. I'll see you back in Philly. All righty, sounds All right. good. All right, Karen. How about that? You found someone right there from Rydal. How about that? I love it. All right, yeah. Mike, stay right there. We'll be right back checking in. You're finding very colorful characters, so we appreciate that, um, just sharing that you know communal experience. We'll be right back coming up in just about two minutes.
Welcome back to our coverage on this Monday. Mike, I see you found another friend. Um, I can't wait to meet this yes. human. Well, okay, wait to hear how he knows me. Now, what did you say? You said, you came up to me, you said that I'm famous. I figured you're from Philadelphia, no? No, I'm from Rochester. I seen you on TikTok from the earthquake video. And I'm like, this, this is the guy right here. This is the guy, this is famous guy. So came up and we're here. I'm famous on TikTok for shaking, I guess, right? Yes, is that yes, what it was? Yes. Shake, 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 yes. shake, shake, yeah. <laughs> well, good to meet you. What's your name? Jeffrey Rogers. Awesome. Yeah, you live here in, in Rochester, Rochester, New York. Enjoy the eclipse. Yes, sir. Get that sun to come out. Come on. <laughs> Goals have been realized, Mike. You've been trying to become TikTok famous. Did you also see at I WrestleMania know. one of the people, what's his name, Smoke something? Uh, he was a famous YouTuber. He came out. He helped um, Logan Paul come out of the ring. Anyway, so every, all the streamers, my kids were like, oh, my God, he gets $10 million yeah. a month. So I'm you're TikTok halfway famous. on your way. Really? Yeah, yeah. Where are you from? We, we came from Ithaca. Oh, that's not far. No. Yeah, Ithaca as well. Yeah. yeah. Cornell? Cornell yeah. yeah. Awesome Cornellian over here. Nicely done. Yeah. Intelligent people. <laughs> Very smart people. We yep. Tried. Are you upset? Yeah. yeah, a little bit. You know, I saw the one in 2017, so this isn't I so bad, it. but you know. Yeah. We're holding maybe, out hope. Yeah. We're holding out hope. hope. We're holding out hope here hope. in Rochester. Come yeah. on, son. We're under two hours to go now, Mike, so we're beginning to get yeah. into that window. We've got our countdown clock on, so we're Good under two hours. Yes. Hello. I was like, wait, I recognize this guy. Are you from Philly? Well, from the Limerick area, so close oh, enough. Oh, yeah, Limerick. That's where all that white stuff comes out? Limerick? <laughs> yep. Cool why, does say, uh, uh, yeah, why does it say anus on your shirt? Well, because my, oh, lovely, it's your anus. It's my your... lovely three-year-old daughter has, for the last couple months, has been giving us planet names, and my husband is Jupiter wearing a Jupiter shirt, and she's Mars, and she chose Uranus for me, and my dad <laughs> thought it was so funny, he thought, well, let's buy him t-shirts. I love it. <laughs> Good to meet you. What's your Good name? Good to meet you, Missy. <laughs> Missy. So you're back in Limerick. All right, Mike. So, of course, our coverage, as I said, we're under two hours. So we're going to be here. You can keep it right here. So from two to four, we're going to be on TV on Fox 29. And always we're streaming on Fox Local as well, just like we are now. Then from four to five, we'll be back here exclusively on Fox Local. And then you know what happens at five o'clock. we got the five o'clock news right here on Fox 29. So be sure to keep it and watch us however you do, whether you should two hours. Yes. Hello, I was like, wait, I recognize this guy. Are you from Philly? Well, from the Limerick area, so close oh, enough. Oh, yeah, Limerick. That's where all that white stuff comes out. Limerick.